This video is sponsored by Nanlite. LED lighting is one of the easiest ways to add something special to your portrait work, but only if you use it correctly. In this photo shoot with Kane, I wanted to take a simple concept, which was basically to incorporate this inexpensive accessory into our studio session, mix it with some dramatic lighting, and hopefully make it look great. But there's a challenge. You see, lately I've been trying to be more efficient for my studio sessions, and I just found myself spending a lot of extra time setting up my lights and modifiers, and I could see where people tend to lean more towards shooting with natural light. In many ways, using natural light is easier and quicker, but the challenge is that if you choose to shoot at the wrong time of day, or if the weather doesn't cooperate with you, your results are gonna be all over the place. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made these images step-by-step step from the ideation phase all the way down to execution. There's some cool tricks here that I think anyone can learn from, and hopefully it will jumpstart some of your own creativity. Also, if you're a fan of portrait photography and you wanna explore new ideas that you could use for your own work, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. I've got some of my best videos in the oven cooking right now that you won't want to miss. For this shoot, I decided to break out my four foot Nanlite Pavo tubes and use them to bring this idea that I had in my head to life. With Kane modeling for me here and an awesome team that brought this gold choker necklace, I was thinking of making a shot that looked ultra luxurious. That was my first instinct, so I wanted to give her skin a gold sheen that just made her look like a golden goddess. In my mind, I was thinking of Charlize Theron in those Dior ads, but with a few tweaks to kind of just make it my own. I set those two four foot Pavo tubes behind her to a warm golden color to create this edge light on her arms and her face. The nice thing about using LED lighting here is that you could see with your own eyes how the lighting is impacting your subject. You can see exactly where the light is hitting your subject and where it isn't. And as you move your lights and you tweak them a little bit, you don't even need a camera to see what's going on. You'll notice in this frame here that to her right, there was a beauty dish, which was actually a strobe that I was using for the look that we shot before this one. The modeling light here wasn't strong enough to make an impact on the photo based on the photo settings that I used, which we'll talk a bit more about later on. Um, the only lights that were actually affecting the exposure of the edge lights were the Pavo tubes behind her. If you wanna learn more about that concept, I have a complete video about it that I'll link for you in the description of this video. Now for the main light, I wanted to try a modifier that I have never used for a portrait session. And after this, I will definitely use it again. This weird looking softbox is called a lantern. And as you might imagine, it's going to give you a soft light, but with the design of it, it's going to spread light all over the place. In my mind, this wasn't going to be a good modifier for this type of work, but you never know unless you try it out. I talk about this a lot in my workshops and it's a big point that I want you to take from this video. There's a huge difference between being what I call a theoretical photographer and actually being an experienced one. You see, in theory, a light modifier like this is probably the worst one that you could choose from. It's not a focused and controlled type of lighting, especially if you compare it to using something like an Octabox. The theoretical photographer out there would probably see it and say it's all wrong, you know, don't use it, but the results kind of speak for themselves. Try using different types of lights and modifiers in your workflow and find what works best given your specific project. That's really all I'm saying here. Okay, so the lantern was my modifier here and I had it on a Nanlite 720B LED light. This is the most powerful LED light that I have here in my studio in terms of output. And because it has a Bowens mount, I could actually use modifiers like this lantern and any other Bowens mount modifiers that I have available to me. As I often do, I added a reflector on a rolling table in front of Kane to add a little bit of sparkle to her eyes and to bring up the specular highlights on her skin. Remember, I was trying to go for a high-end golden look, so this reflector was really important. Most photographers starting out, they trash this idea of having these bright specular highlights on the skin. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with them so long as you keep it under control. If your model has really reflective makeup on already or they have oily skin, 
then maybe you won't need a reflector uh, like the one that I used in this video. It might be overkill, but here it worked perfectly since Kane already had amazing looking skin. Since I know many of you like to see the results straight out of camera, here are a few images straight out of camera. I use the Sony Alpha 7R5 for these along with one of my favorite lenses for studio photography, the 70 to 200 F 2.8 G Master version two. Most of the shots I ended up taking were anywhere between 135 to 170 millimeters. Here are the final images that I actually ended up delivering fully retouched. There's one more important thing to talk about, but before that, I should probably mention how clutch my black V flats were here. If you ever need a black background, using a V-flat makes setup and teardown happen really quickly. The most important thing I could tell you to get great results in your portrait work actually boils down to five key tips. I made a video all about it that you could watch right now. Click the video that you see here on the screen and I'll see you there.